We already know that for the most part, the school system is broken in many different ways and that the technology era makes it difficult enough already to survive with a college degree these days. Having that degree is no guarantee for success in this ever-changing economy. But don't worry. Today we'll discuss the most important skills you need to hone in order to thrive in the real world. Not only that, but we'll also give you some valuable bonus tips that could help you with your personal growth. Make sure to watch until the end of the video. Number 1. How to properly learn. How many times do you find yourself saying something like, I wish someone told me this before, or I wish I knew about this in school. The truth is that today you have an unimaginable amount of resources and tools at your fingertips that can potentially help you to learn anything, anywhere. The most efficient way to learn and acquire new information is not by reading and memorizing facts, like they do in school. You're better off by becoming familiar with the technology and realizing how to get answers by yourself. Number 2. How to negotiate. You may not know this but negotiation is a part of your daily life. You do it even without being 100% conscious you're doing it. When you are trying to convince someone to go on a date with you, or explaining to your parents why you must get your own car, even when you use Twitter to share your opinion on the internet, negotiation is a crucial part of your day-to-day -day life and the earlier you realize this, the better. You don't need to win every argument or convince everyone about your point of view, but it's sure it's handy to know that you can do it, simply because you already have enough practice negotiating all the time. Number 3. How to deal with mental problems. In no way this video will teach you everything there is to know about all mental conditions and how to manage them realistically. But it's a given fact that school doesn't teach you this and not only that, but sometimes it feels like it's still taboo to talk about these things, even if the school has a full-time counselor. If you or someone you know are struggling with this, please seek help. If anything, what we want you to take from this short video is that looking for mental help and not being judged must be the norm. The best thing we can do is raise awareness to the fact that even if some of the most common mental conditions need medication, and some others don't, no one should be judged just by having them. The last thing you want to have in America is a school system that doesn't prioritize its students' mental conditions. Number 4. How to be confident. People oftentimes confuse being confident with being cocky and arrogant. That is just a misconception. Or, when two concepts are so narrow that their definitions might overlap. It's a fact that school does not address the importance of well-formed and natural confidence. Being confident means that external factors cannot affect your mood or attitude in a certain situation because you are fully aware of your own value and also when you know that against adversity, you can always count on yourself. Number 5. How to properly help others. In certain social settings helping others is frowned upon. And it shouldn't be the case. School grades are based on competition and in the idea that you must be better than your peers, but the evolution of society as it is, has been tied to our human disposition to help the ones in need. In other words, we could not have evolved as humans without being able to help the ones that are different from us. In today's world, it feels like everyone is in a race, a race that you can't win as an individual. Instead of that, try and use both your logical and emotional intelligence to know who you can help. Number 6. How to track progress. It's easy to think that you are stuck in the same place forever when you do not know how to keep track of your own progress. Let me give you an example. Why do you think video games always split their stories into chapters or levels? So that you, the player, have a clear sense of what you have accomplished so far and also how many levels you have left before the big boss. Make it a habit from this day forward to write down your short and long-term goals because time will pass anyways and before you know it, you'll feel stuck in a time loop again, not knowing where to go. Number 7. How to believe in the process. Speaking of time, we've made it our mission to let you know that time is on your side. But let's dive deep into what that really means. When you see time as your enemy, deadlines turn more difficult the more they approach and if you don't have a clear purpose, you might feel lost. On the contrary, when you see time as your friend, you'll come to understand that no matter what you do, it will still pass and you must make every single second count without falling into the trap of worrying too much about the things you can't control. Believing in the process can be an amalgamation of all other skills mentioned here because life is precisely just that. A process, not a finish line. We hope that with this said, you'll look at deadlines as what they really are. Another step. Number 8. How to let go. Let's get something clear. Quitting should be your last resource in anything in life. However, you know that there are some situations that don't require your constant input. In fact, some of those situations may pan out better without your presence. Recognizing when you have to call it a day is as important as knowing how far you can go in life. If your goal is to become wealthy to help others, meaning that money is a means to an end, then a toxic relationship will just prevent you from leaving a great mark in this world. 
Letting go can be extremely painful and difficult but it sure comes with its perks, like being able to push your emotional intelligence to its limits. Which by the way, is a prerequisite to breaking the poverty cycle. And that's something you never hear in school. Number 9. How to come up with alternative plans. Let's face it, the main plan must be your priority at all times. However, an alternative solution should also be on the table. Why? Simply put it this way. If you can solve a problem or reach a goal in more than one way, you can use leverage in a plethora of situations. Like we always say, only financially illiterate people put all their eggs in the same basket. Plan ahead and envision multiple ways to solve a problem. The key is to know your options and being able to recognize patterns to capitalize on them. Number 10. How to be grateful. This is the one thing this world needs the most. We live in a time and era in which everything is taken for granted and we fail to appreciate the little things we have. For example, did you know that if you were born only 100 years ago, you'd be at a higher risk of not passing the age of 5? If the internet were to disappear tomorrow, how would your life change? Would you be willing to live as your ancestors did 100 years ago? Yeah, it will be a miracle if you could adapt quickly if that were to happen. Be grateful for the things you have, and the people around you. Just because life seems difficult now, it doesn't mean that it can't be much more difficult. Number 11. How to solve problems. Every problem is different and every single one of us tries to solve them in a different way. Imagine all the possible solutions you could come up with if you just were to put yourself in someone else's shoes for a moment. Before you can solve a problem, you should be able to identify it first. That's where the vast majority of us struggle. One thing we recommend is to always analyze things from two clear perspectives, logical and psychological. For example, let's say that in your office, people complain too much about how long the elevators take to come down and then back up. The logical solution would be to place more elevators. Now, how much would it cost? A lot for sure. A psychological solution would be to place mirrors inside the elevators. Why? Because people are vain and they want to take their time looking at their reflections in the mirrors. Just like that, they get distracted and forget the original problem. Always come up with a logical and a psychological approach. Compare them and make a rational decision. Number 12. How the game of life works. In case you haven't noticed, life's like a game. Every year that passes feels like a level. When you're a kid, that's like the tutorial. You have little power, little resources and everything is ideally set in a controlled environment. When you're a teenager, those are only the first levels. You struggle getting power-ups, no one knows what they're doing and you can't wait to fight the first boss. When you're an adult, that's where the real fun and challenges begin. You find the hard way that nothing will be like the tutorial or the first levels. But soon enough you realize that you are somewhat in control of your own destiny, for better or worse. The game of life is just that, realizing that there has to be a balance between fun and responsibilities. Because otherwise, what's the point of living if you don't have fun? Number 13. How to improvise. Yes, improvisation is pivotal for character development. Unfortunately, the only improv you get to do at school is the one you do to barely pass from one year to another. We wish more and more people realize that having and perfecting this skill will definitely take you places. You don't need to be Dave Chappelle to speak your mind in a way that those around you find you interesting. Oftentimes, you'll be good with just asking open-ended questions in a conversation and people will immediately change the way they look at you. Number 14. How to sell. Selling is an art, a human art at that. Anyone can try to sell but only those who understand the human mind in all its predictability will close bigger and bigger deals. Let us tell you a little secret. It doesn't matter if you like sales or not, if you can't sell yourself in the real world, your chances of becoming someone will diminish drastically. Focus on knowing yourself, your strengths and weaknesses so that when opportunity arises, you're more than ready to close that deal. Number 15. How to plan your life ahead. Some college degrees will ask you to write a paper or a thesis in order to graduate. Then why not apply that same principle to your life? Make a list of goals you want to achieve in the next 10 years, but don't stop there. Alongside that, also write down the steps that you would have to take in order to reach every possible goal. Like we always say, planning, research, execution and incremental improvement must be the core philosophy that every person with the intention of becoming successful must follow. It's not that difficult and it's definitely a time-saver mechanism. Bonus tip number one. Write everything down. To further enhance the skills we mentioned here it's important that you understand that the individual who's unable to adapt gets left behind. That's why you must make an extraordinary effort to keep yourself updated with the times. Our recommendation on the matter is that you develop the habit to take notes of every single idea that comes to you. Your brain will not be as bright as it is today and your memory will also decay. 
The faster you implement this simple trick the better. It might sound silly now but you'll remember us the next time you are filled with regret when you forget to write down that multi-million dollar idea that came to you in a dream. Bonus tip number two. Know the difference between learning and studying. Most successful people in business fall in one of these two categories. They either were great learners or bad students. In other words, remember that schooling as we know it today is not necessary, but education is totally 100% required in order to be an extraordinary human being. Someone who absolutely believes that is Elon Musk. We actually covered some little known facts about him in this video right here. Check it out now if you want to start thinking like him.